What is up, everybody? This is Jim Russell bringing to you another episode of Rise in the Puck. Like I said, my name is Jim Russell, and this is Rise in the Puck. We're going to be talking about some really, really big things that I'll obviously be talking about in the NHL that's been going on recently. Of course, got to mention Alex Ovechkin chasing the great one Wayne Gretzky's record and only being 31 goals off from tying the record. And, of course, also got to mention another great, great hockey player talking about Connor McDavid and – chasing a thousand points and of course also got to mention the hall of fame but before we dive too deep into the episode first always got to make sure you mention those sponsors that we all sincerely deeply love and today's sponsor of the day is SeatGeek. now you can go on to the on to your local ios android app store whichever kind of cellular plan device that you have you can download the seat geek app and you can download the seat geek app and just start making your account first then you can search for whatever sporting event whatever um theater even comedy shows whatever kind of event that you're specifically looking for you can see how they grade their tickets which is a thing that i sincerely love to see green Further scale means it's a really good deal. You might want to jump on it. The yellow that you see, it's it's an okay deal, but you can probably maybe find some better. Then the red layout that you see is not the greatest deal, so go ahead and look somewhere else, and you can hopefully find a better ticket for you. But we love SeatGeek so much. We've partnered up with them. They use, use the code down below, R2TO, for $20 off, and just like that, you can use it for your next ticket purchase. But, guys, we love SeatGeek so much. Go ahead and take advantage of that discount code, SeatGeek. Life is the event. And we have your tickets, but let's kick it into the episode. But first, always got to make sure that if we have a special guest in the house tonight, we always got to make sure we mention them. And tonight's special guest of the night, you usually see him on Rise on the Occasion with myself, but the nice special guest is Josh Mahler. Josh, how are we doing tonight? I'm doing all right, man. I mean, it's it's fun. It's a you know good to, good time to be on here and talking some NHL because NHL season is upon us. Mm-hmm. And man, it's 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 been an exciting season so far. But now we get to talk about some some records and then uh, some guys that are already in the record book and now cementing themselves into the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a surreal moment to see what we got definitely on sleeve for potentially having Alex Ovechkin break Wayne Gretzky's record, then hopefully see Connor McDavid break a thousand points and we definitely do have a long road to definitely see ahead of us let's get in the rule into tonight's episode first things first i'm going to talk about the great one alex ovechkin and chasing the great one the wayne gretzky goal record 894 goals sitting for wayne gretzky but alex ovechkin is only 31 goals away from tying the all-time great one and it 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 doesn't seem surreal that anyone is ever going to possibly beat Wayne Gretzky's record and Ovi has been around the game so long just like Wayne Gretzky was when he was when he was in his prime and everything and you look at what just even the great one the original great one Wayne Gretzky was able to do and all the highlight reels and everything that you've sincerely seen then Josh I know we weren't around obviously when Wayne Gretzky was playing here but of course still whenever you watch hockey you you don't watch a hockey game and not hear something about the great one, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Wayne Gretzky, one of the greatest, and and you can go back and look at highlights and watch him play and what yeah. he did. But you don't even have to watch him without knowing how amazing he is, just because you know, for one, he's on, he's one of the great ones on uh, TNT now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you get to hear his his experiences. Uh, he's he's just one of those guys that has impacted the game so much, and you can hear it from guys who have lived and have lived long enough to see him play. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see a guy like him, uh, you know, or I guess to see a guy, a guy's record like his, mm-hmm. uh, you know, be, be this close to being broken. And this is what records are for. They're yeah. meant to be broken. Absolutely. I mean, re- records are definitely meant to be broken. Then the big thing is looking for Alexander Ovechkin. He has nobody in between his way. He's literally beat everybody else out. And now he only has a side set for the great one. And of course, even the great one, definitely, he talked to Ovi just to, I know it was a couple nights ago when Ovi wasn't having the greatest game that he personally felt. Then it, it was definitely kind of a little bit of a, a unreal, surreal moment just because Wayne Gretzky has such a great relationship with anybody that, that really gets on skates, honestly. Then he was talking to Ovi and was just saying that, don't let the record fool you just because you're going to break this record one day. And Ovi responded back, 
It's just being really greatly appreciated just for the unreal words that Wayne Gretzky was willing to give the Alexander Ovechkin. But the one thing that I will also kind of admit that's a little bit funny that um, you've probably heard this on social media, but Alex Ovechkin was always the one thing that he wanted from the great one not to beat his record. Well, I mean, that's his overall goal, but he wanted to get an autographs game stick from Wayne Gretzky. And um, Wayne Gretzky commented back to Alex Ovechkin, once you win a Stanley Cup, I will finally get you that game you <laughs> stick. Then he finally got that game you stick just because Alex Ovechkin won the Stanley Cup, and that was an amazing moment to see for him in Washington. But, I mean, Josh, 31 goals. Can he pull it off this year, or do you think it might be – I mean, take it for granted, Alex Ovechkin has been lighting the lamp really good this year. Yeah, I mean, so if you compare to last season, last season he had 31 goals all season long. Mm-hmm. Now, we know that he's capable of doing more than that. He's had 10 so far this season and only 14 games played. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you, you look at how where he started, too. His first season's back with the Capitals, and he's been there the entire time, which yeah. is unheard of, especially in a sport like hockey where you play so much. It's such a physical sport to be playing for this long, uh, you know, going on 20 years yeah. in the league. I mean, just it's it's insane how long he's been there. But starting off, his first season had 52 goals. Uh, you know, in his third season, he had uh, 65 goals. Uh, that that seems to be the highest he's ever scored in a season. Yeah. I don't know that he's going to score anything close to that, but I, I I feel like knowing that you're so close to retirement and so you're also so close to such uh, an achievable goal, an achievable record to break, and and you've got this moment to put your name down uh, and put your legacy down. I, I feel like he's him and his team are going to do whatever they can to try to achieve that goal this this season with just 31 left uh, with with a lot of games to play. Uh-huh. And, you know, all he has to do is just finish it out. I mean, 31 goals. It seems like a lot. But when I mean, you just you just think about this, you know, being, you know, less than less than a goal per per game. That's all he got to achieve for. Yeah. If you can if you can achieve for one goal per game for the next 31, 32 games, you broke the record. And and you get to live on and 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 you know you can retire after this year. Absolutely, I mean, <laughs> heck, he might retire the day after he scores. He Why gets not? The record. Why not? But, I mean, the one thing that I can sincerely wish, and it obviously you can't make this up or anything. You wish or want to see Ovi break the record in DC. I that mean, would, that would be amazing. That would be that would be amazing. That would be the most unreal thing to ever be a part of Alex Ovechkin's career and like don't get me wrong like same thing like what we were talking about Wayne Gretzky you look at Alex Ovechkin and look at all the unreal goals that he's been able to score throughout his entire course in the NHL the one that I can never forget at the back of my head and then literally not even looking at the goal still somehow managed to get the puck on the backhand of a stick and still getting it in the net I believe it was against the Arizona Coyotes if memory serves me correctly but I mean it, OV can definitely do it if he gets his mind right going into night in and night out. But hopefully we can see the great one beat the great one this season. And if not, we have to roll over to next year. I mean, hey, that just means more hockey we can see from Alex Ovechkin. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, it's it's insane, too. And and you know that Ovechkin is not the type of guy that he's really chasing this for his own glory. He's yeah. chasing it because it's achievable. He's chasing it because, uh, you know, and you bring up Wayne Gretzky too. It just shows how much of an amazing guy he is. Um, and even of a mentor, even though he's done with the game, he's, yeah. even though he's done playing the game, he's not done with the game. Yeah. And, and he's sitting, sitting there being a mentor for a guy like Ovechkin who, uh, you know, he's, he's got a guy like Wayne Gretzky in his corner cheering for him to break his own record, which I think is just crazy, yeah. but just shows how selfless Wayne is. You know, he's held, held on to this record for how long now? Forever. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so it, you know, he's ready to let go of it. Hey, yeah. you, you take over now, young yeah. buck, you know, and. It's 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 awesome to see that relationship. Uh, absolutely, just we definitely do want to see the torch getting passed on to the next great one. But speaking of passing along, we're going to be moving on to our next topic here. Then talking about another great great hockey player, talking about Connor McDavid here, who's chasing that thousand point mark, He's so close. And Connor McDavid was battling a little bit of an injury bug for just a short brief amount of time, but Connor McDavid now back in the full swing, full full momentum and full mobility and everything for Connor McDavid having 995 career points going into, into the next series of games, you know, for him, especially being at of young of his age as he is sky's the limit. I mean, just look at what Connor McDavid was able to do. Look at his skating ability. Look at his 
puck movement, look at being able to read the defense and know when you're going to see the pocket close and still with his skating ability. I mean, if you haven't seen Connor McDavid skate or even know who Connor McDavid is, just which just just let <laughs> type Connor McDavid and then there will be about a million things that pop up. But Josh, 995 career points. What do you think is running through the mind of Connor McDavid outside of just wanting to simply beat this record? Well, and and I know he was asked about this too leading into this week where he's going to be playing against the Islanders tonight, if memory serves me correctly. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's his opportunity to do it and to be the the seventh fastest or sorry the the fourth fastest to reach there. He's twenty seven years old, and the the guys that have reached a thousand points quicker than him. We just talked about him, Wayne Gretzky being yeah. number one in only 424 games, which is absolutely insane. Yeah, uh, you know Wayne Gretzky was was young when he started too, like 16 yeah. years old, yeah. getting into the league, and and it's one you know, thing like you see and, in like um, in baseball where you see him come right yeah. out from high school to the MLB, but like for Wayne Gretzky, that's probably the best example I can yeah. give. Come out of high school, a little straight in the well, and, and you know, so you've got Wayne Gretzky who did it in 424, Mario Lemieux who did it in 513, and then Mike Bossy who did it in 656. Yeah. Uh, now, Connor McDavid would be one game behind Mike Bossy uh, doing it in 657 if he could do it tonight, which uh, I guess by the time this is released, it might might have already happened. Yeah, I mean, hey, you can never know. We'll just have to wait. It, and it find would out. it would be pretty insane to have five points in one game. Oh man, that but because uh, he is just five away, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So five nine, five, five away five, from yeah. yeah five away from thousand. So I mean, insane. Just look at this. Read off the names again. I mean, talk about big Wayne, time names: Wayne, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky, Mario, Mario Lemieux. Lemieux. Yeah, and, and then uh, Mike Bossy. So I mean, I mean, just insane, insane guys to be following after, and the only guys that have done it faster than you. Are legends. I mean, absolute wh- legends. What more can you really say about that? And like you said, only being at the age of 27, that is another big thing. Like you look at a lot of these rising stars that just come straight from, um, straight from the minors, just play one game of the minors, for example, then go right into the NHL, and then they're becoming literally like a star. This is a true definition of determination and not ruthlessness, but just being able to do whatever. It, whatever he can physically do and take to try and get as many points as he can underneath that column. It's, it's something that you obviously don't really see a lot, but I mean, that's just unreal for being able to have that kind of repertoire and talent alone, just to be able to try and knock somebody out like this. Well, and Chris Noblock, the, the coach for, uh, for, for the, the Oilers, he, he was talking about that too, just how amazing it was that he doesn't want to talk about it. He's not concerned about it. He, he knows that it's there. It's a huge milestone. And he recognizes that. Um, but he doesn't want to talk about it. No, that's that's not important to him. What's important to him is getting back to the big stage, getting back up there, and winning himself a championship. You know, yeah. that's what he wants is that cup. Of course. Uh, and and he is he's a very selfless player. You can tell by the way he plays. You can be, tell by the the way that his team surrounds him and, yeah. and rallies around him. His team, much like what we just talked about that with with Ovechkin, his team wants that for him so bad. You know, just like. The Caps, Caps want yeah. that for Ovechkin. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, I mean, it, it's two guys that we've talked about here that are reaching some milestones. And, of course, Ovechkin's being a little bit bigger, you know, more more of a, a you know, you're going to be down on record books. Um, but still, both of these are huge milestones. And and these both of these guys are just not really that concerned about the goal, you know, like that. But their team might be more concerned about it than yeah. they are, which is which is just crazy to see. And two very selfless players, uh, and and just wanting to win the next game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, selfless is easily the best word that you can honestly describe these guys that we're talking about, just because they they can care less realistically about wanting to be the record, even though I know that sounds absolutely absurd, but that's the one thing that they guarantee you have them in the back of their mind that it's just a number. But at the end of the day, this is going to be me in some unreal moments to where this is definitely going to be a moment to remember for the rest of my hockey career, just your life in general. And I obviously everyone wishes them nothing but the best. We want to see them break this record and just move on, become an even better of a player and just inspire so many people down in the minors or just even younger kids. And you see both these guys in particular, like we're talking about Alex Ovechkin and Connor McDavid, you just see them doing so much work in the community and just giving back to local charities. And that's just another big way to show how much these guys not only care about the sport, but just being able to care about their community and the team that they play for and they want to promote and make them even better people. Yeah. And here's another stat that I just saw that, you know, is 
pretty crazy. So since 1917, when the NHL was first, you know, founded, yeah. uh, you know, roughly 8,000 players have played and only 98 have made it to the thousand thousand point club. Uh, he would be the 99th, which is really? pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. When you think about all the comparisons wow. between him and somebody else, he used to wear that number 99. <laughs> we might've changed just to the great one. Episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty insane. Uh, you know, just that he would be the 99th player to reach that thousand I thousand did, point club. So I didn't know that that's, that's pretty incredible. That's unreal. Yeah, like, Pretty incredible. When you, when you sit there and, and connect all those dots and, and how much comes back to Wayne Gretzky. Uh, you know, and, and of course, Wayne Gretzky playing with the Oilers for a little bit of time. Right. He's got his own little like, uh, you know, concession stand up there yeah, he does. Uh, too. And so, you know, really, really cool. And then, of course, all the comparisons that they make between him and Wayne Gretzky because of how similar their style of play is, how he, yeah. they're both very young and progressing so quickly. And now this. So, yeah. I mean, it's just nonstop comparisons to the great one. That's, um, that's, that's crazy. It's, I, it's, it's, it's awesome too, that we're, we're living in history. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that's, that's pretty cool to step back and realize. I mean, I would love to step back in time and just see Wayne Gretzky in his prime. But I mean, don't get me wrong as, as amazing as that sounds like I love living in the world that we have now, just beca- being able to see all the unreal sites that we can easily see these players be making. And we obviously know, but for at least one of them, we got a lot longer of a road for them. The other one, we hope we can still see at least a couple more seasons out of them. But time will only tell. But moving on to our next topic, Josh, I know we've been talking about a lot of great players. But the one thing that you can never forget is to always talk about the players who have done so much and their name is being recognized into the NHL Hall of Fame in the tw- class of 2024. I know there was... Um, seven initially in the class, but we can only fit so much obvious <laughs> on our screen then. But of course, we still obviously want to make sure we mention, at least talk about a little bit of everyone. But of course, we'll start off at the top on the very first one, Shea Weber. Of course, Shea Weber, if you if you never see him play, just I can tell you one thing's for certain. If you ever see him take a slap shot, I'm going to tell you two things. One, get out of the way. Two, don't blink. Is if you blink, you're gonna absolutely miss it. Shea Weber is one of those guys. He did bounce around with some teams here, of course, being being strong with the Montreal Canadiens, like going down to the National Predators and playing there. Shea Weber was a absolute brute. He has some unrealistic stats that you can honestly think nothing compared to like. Um, like w- great Wayne Gretzky, Ovechkin, and something like that. But I mean, just even having one of the hardest shots, if not, if memory serves me correctly, having the hardest shot in the NHL for, um, I don't know if that's still current, but I think it might be broken. I think it was 106 really. That's crazy. 107 miles an hour. I mean, I would not want to necessarily be a goalie if no. I'm if I see Shea Weber sitting. At the I, I already don't want to be a goalie because of how many pucks they have to take. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, especially if if that's coming in. And and I looked it up too just to just to check too. He's he's not a member of the thousand point club, which yeah. is pretty insane. You know, that he he played for that long too. Yeah. I um, know. He he's only got uh five hundred and eighty nine total points uh, that he's got. But you just still still an amazing career. Oh, you know, and looking what he did with the Canadians and the Predators and uh, you know, just I mean, he made it to the playoffs several times. Uh, you know, just one of those guys that was constantly making making his appearance on on the on the ice and and making his presence known too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, he may have made some well known presence and made plenty of all star appearances and stuff like that. But the realistic thing is, just he sincerely is one of those people. He's a down to earth kind of guy, just like you see any player in the NHL. They want to, as much as they put on to effort into a single night, the one thing that they can sincerely, truly love to see is seeing a little boy or a little girl sitting in the stands, just making their day, flowing a puck over the glass, whether it be during warm ups or after the game, and just seeing that face light up. That truly means more to them than the entire game itself. And even from even speaking for myself, when I played hockey, that was one of the moments that I sincerely love doing, just whether it be a practice puck or whether it be a game puck. But moving on to our next individual that we're going to be talking about for the Hall of Fame, JR, good old Jeremy Roenick. I mean, Jeremy Roenick has been known throughout the game and just his style and his enthusiasm just beyond the beyond the game just beyond what he's done for announcing and stuff like that yeah i mean jeremy roenick is 
one of those names to where you immediately know about him, whether it be from on the ice or behind the mic. Jeremy Roenick, he is a much muchly deserved candidate for the class of 2024 and it was truly unbelievable to see him get his name inducted into the hall of fame i know i listened to his speech and it was definitely touching just like all the speeches sincerely were for yeah. the hall of fame inductees but i, I feel like his definitely was the most notable that you know, was, yeah exactly. for, for me anyways i felt like he, yeah he just he did a really good job with his speech uh banked himself in 1,216 points. Mm -hmm. He's in that 1,000-point club. Yeah. Uh, he played in 1,363 games. That's less Which, than Ovechkin played, and he's still playing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just kind of going back and showing how tough Ovechkin is. But still, you know, his time with the Blackhawks, uh, Coyotes, Coyotes, the Flyers, the Kings, Sharks. I, he I mean, bounced around. But. Yeah, but, I mean, it, that's, that's, that's something that happens in the NHL. Absolutely. But still just – uh, it, making an impact everywhere he went too, yeah. uh, and and I feel like the the people that were around him recognize him for making the impact that he always made too. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely a surreal moment to see Jeremy Roenick make it into the Hall of Fame. But moving on to our next individual, the man of many talents, and when I mean talents, I mean if you've never seen a breakaway shot or anything that this individual is able to pull out of his hat. Pablo Dotsuk, the magician is able to do so. Pablo Dotsuk, obviously known for playing in the Detroit Red Wings, just being able to see what he was capable of doing in a shootout situation, two on one, being able to completely get the goalie out of position. And of course, everyone loves seeing Pablo Datsuk. One of his big dreams and he got to live it was raised Stanley Cup. That was oh yeah. Uh, that was a surreal moment. Just like any NHL player's dream is just to lift that Stanley Cup. And Pablo Datsuk, another man of many talents and tricks that he has up his sleeve. He's one of those players you you could never know what he's going to be able to do, Josh. Well, yeah, and he's he's one of those guys, one of my favorite uh you know really one of my favorite games of all time but my favorite hockey game of all time nhl 06 uh, i can remember playing with him back then like in his heyday you know and uh, yeah it's, it's, he's one of those those phenomenal players that you know like you said being able to win the stanley cup um before your career is over is something mm -hmm. that not, not not i mean honestly even a majority of players don't get to do that yeah so i mean that's that's something that is an incredible uh feat just in and of itself and and having the career that he had uh, most notable, like you said, for the Red Wings and and doing what he did there. I mean, it was, it's it's, it's awesome to see guys like like this get into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many people that we could obviously induct into the Hall of Fame, and I know time will definitely do the thing, and they can hopefully get their proper induction to the Hall of Fame. But it's definitely great to see um, Pablo Dotsu being inducted into the hall of fame but um i know we also have some other names to mention josh i don't know if you necessarily have their names pulled up yeah. i know i do um but obviously outside of weber ronick datsu there's uh, four other names that we at least want Dar to darwitz was another one to, to bring up okay yes yeah, so you had uh, natalie darwitz yeah natalie darwitz okay then obviously being known for being played for team usa mm -hmm. then having some having a great career and just um, not, not even just a career, having a great representation for our country for playing for team USA. And she was one of the, one of the big time goal scorers for team USA, having a lot of, having a lot of points, getting up, having a lot of assists, then just being able to represent our country is one thing, but you know, having a big heart like she did. I know there's two females that did get inducted to the hall of fame as well. Yeah. Um, Josh, it's just one thing to be able to play hockey and being well known, but being able to play for your country for Team USA. How much do you think that means to them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's awesome. Uh, you know, to to be able I know to we get talk that about point. it for sports, honestly but. for me, it wouldn't. I wouldn't really know uh, who Natalie was uh, if it wasn't for her contribution to being in a part of Team USA, yeah. uh, which is just awesome. You know, and then the fact that we they, that we recognize these women too that you know had a great career, but then on top of that, especially for 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 the women who get to you know go and kind of represent, represent their whatever their country is you know yeah, I, I support you being able to go and support your country absolutely it just just so happens to hit home a little bit more for us yeah. that that she she went and she was able to play for uh you know for our country yeah absolutely I mean like I said I know she's not the only female that they get inducted to the Hall of Fame there was another female same same thing but yeah, I believe it was the cap Chrissy Wendell Paul. yeah she was yeah, the captain, also correct? also Team USA yeah 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 so I mean it was yeah another another great great uh, addition to the hall of fame just knowing that you've got somebody that again played for for your country which mm -hmm. is you know something that i mean I, I i have to imagine 
uh, you know, if you're able to play for your country, especially if you're able to win with your country, mm -hmm. that that has to be a greater honor than winning a Stanley Cup in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, of course, I'm speaking without the experience, but <laughs> just saying, I mean, I, I feel like that's got to be something that would uh, it feels like a little bit more more uh rewarding to yeah. be able to do something not just for a team not just for a small league but for your entire country yeah absolutely. pretty amazing i mean i've lifted the stanley cup that's about it but yeah. not for any team yeah. but yeah i got i got to lift it back when uh ruslan fedotenko yeah, uh, like uh, got, got to got to hold that up that was really fun but of course moving on to another individual talking about um david poyer being able to also yeah. be inducted into the hall of fame that was another another great aspect to seeing him um, obviously a Toronto native and just playing, having, having a background, even just for um, uh, just being able to love the sport of hockey, obviously it's a son, a long time player and executive, Bud Poyer, and just being able to do just like what he, like what, what his father did and just be come into the NHL and just back it up and just try and do whatever he can to get that puck in the back of the net. It was a great moment to see you could definitely see on his face he was he was definitely a little emotional but obviously fight giving a big smile and just going up and presenting his speech and i know mm -hmm. obviously playing from 69 to 70 um in the final two seasons he was voted for the M the most valuable player um for his respected team and i can't remember exactly who that team was i had it on the tip of my tongue uh -huh. but um uh, do, 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 was do, do, do. was that when he was with the Predators? I think yeah, it was with the Predators. Was it? Yeah, that I was mean, that was his final two years with the Predators. Yeah, um, it, it it's great to see and go about on that kind of a term and being getting voted for being the MVP for your last two years, especially for a great organization like Nashville, especially back in the day. Yeah, yeah, and and he's even one of those guys too that uh, you know he gave so much to the sport, not just as a player, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of these guys that we mentioned. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of guys just in general, you know, they they go in and they they give their time to as a player mm -hmm. and they just kind of move on. But him, he, he gave it as a player, as a coach, he, uh, you know, as, as working in the offices. I mean, he did all kinds of stuff for the game and adding to it. Uh, one of those guys definitely, uh, definitely deserved making it his way into the Hall of Fame. Really glad that he was able to get inducted as well. Absolutely. But moving on to our last member, we, of course, want to talk about from beginning into the Hall of Fame, that is Colin Campbell. Colin Campbell is another individual um, born in London, Ontario, another Canadian native, and being able to do, obviously, coming from the OHA down in juniors and just keep moving his way through the entire process and just seeing what he was capable of obviously doing and playing for the national team for the NHL, then playing for the Pittsburgh Penguins and just having a surreal career just throughout his entire time in the NHL. I know a lot of people obviously looked up to him. He was a really motivational kind of a person. Whether you're down, he's one of those guys that can definitely look up onto the bench and say, hey, this is what we need to do. We need to get on to this kind of a game plan and we can definitely beat these guys. But Josh, being able to have Colin Campbell into the NHL Hall of Fame is definitely a surreal moment. Yeah, I mean, uh, an amazing, uh, you know, amazing playing career. And then, you know, going on, another guy that got to go in to, to coaching and coach for 13 years, mm -hmm. as I got to win the Stanley Cup as an assistant coach, yeah. uh, you know, and so th that was with the New York Rangers and then got to be the head coach of the New York Rangers, which, which has to be an awesome thing, you know, to yeah. be basically promoted up, you know, from being an assistant coach going on and coaching for four years with the Rangers yeah. uh, as a head coach, just uh, and again, another guy adding to the sport uh, in, in any way that he possibly could. So just, just an, an overall class uh, that, that, you know, it's, it's one of those classes, like one of those, you know, earlier on in, in earlier classes, I feel like you and I are young enough being, you know, 26, 27 years old that we, we don't remember a whole lot about these guys, but now we're f finally getting into the these last few classes where, hey, I know that name. Yeah. I recognize that name. I got to see him play. I got to, you know, I know I know what he did, you know, and so we have more of an attachment to it. So I feel like this newer generation, which I would include you, you and I in, yeah. gets to really appreciate these upcoming classes in the, in the Hall of Fame, which is really cool, really cool to dive into. Yeah, it's, it's one thing that you and I got to experience for a Hall of Fame in pro football, but being able to go and see the Pro Hockey Hall of Fame is another big thing that's definitely on my bucket list. Uh, I don't know. If it's on the same list, I would assume it probably is for oh, you, yeah. Josh, yeah, obviously. 100%. I know you and I definitely are going to be doing some um, 
we might be doing some traveling, obviously trying to sneak up to Minneapolis, go see some games whenever we get some free time. But ladies and gentlemen, that is all that we have on the slate tonight. We do deeply appreciate you sticking around. hearing from you guys and if you're not already doing that if you're listening to apple podcast spotify whatever you sincerely listen to always make sure to give us that five-star review it always is meaning to us and we love seeing those reviews check in with you guys but that's another edition on the episode of rising the puck my name's josh my name's jim russell <laughs> you're josh. josh yeah i'm so used to being on the second wing but my name is jim russell this is josh Mahler. we'll catch y'all next time